live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2018. Brought to you by Commvault. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee. The home this week of Commvault Go with Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE. Happy to welcome to the program a regular on our program, Patrick Osborne, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Big Data and Secondary Story Storage at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Patrick, great to see you. Great, to ha thanks for having me. Love to be on theCUBE, appreciate it. Yeah, so we, we've had you on theCUBE in lots of places, but a first in Nashville, because it's the first time we've been here. Uh, Keith's second time at the show, my first. What, what, what's your impression so far? Yeah, so this is our first uh, uh, major presence here at Commvault Go. I think it's going pretty well so far. Uh, certainly a great venue. We, we actually uh, we do a couple of things here uh, for our own um, uh, our own pre-sales folks. So, first impressions, love the fact that we have a whole uh, conference dedicated to secondary storage. Certainly, again, a lot of importance uh, lately with, within customer conversations as well as overall investment uh, in the industry. So, I'm pretty impressed. Pretty lively crowd here. Yeah, uh, I really liked, uh, we started off the morning talking to Chris Powell, the CMO of Commvault, talking about how, you know, Commvault is a 20-year-old company. And therefore, there were certain things that a 20-year-old company has. As you think about you know, their pricing were, you think about you know, how people's perceptions of them are. You work at you know, a, a company with plenty of history. HPE can partner with whomever they'd like to. Yep. Why is it important for, for HPE to, to, to partner with Commvault? Yeah, 20 years uh, for Commvault, 78 for HPE, right? So we got a lot of, a lot of chops there. Um, you know, for us, we are, secondary storage is certainly becoming very important for customers. And it's being driven by, you know, new user stories, new capabilities, you know, centered around data. So what we look for is, you know, as a technology company, we want to provide an entire solution, like vertically oriented, that not only includes our, you know, our compute, networking, storage, secondary storage, cloud, but as well as a, you know, a very vibrant ecosystem. So we've been working certainly with at customers and in the partner ecosystem with Commvault for a number of years, and now we've formula, uh, you know, formalized that and codified it with a couple of technology announcements, certainly on the go-to-market side, and then you know, some offerings we've done as a service, so backup as a service. So let's talk about some of these technology announcements. Talk to us about the significance of the store once Commvault integration. Got a great deduplication appliance in store once. Now you're bringing Commvault to the scene, to the uh, solution. What advantage does that bring the customer? First off. Yeah, so we, we have a couple uh, specific integrations we've done. We've, we have uh, our primary all flash arrays, Nimble and 3PAR, certainly within the IntelliSnap uh, umbrella. We've, we've worked with them in the past. We've worked with uh, Commvault recently to deliver uh, some support for our deduplication uh, algorithms. We have our, what we call Catalyst, it's the ability to do right. dedupe anywhere, right, within the data center, and even outside the data center. So they support that, it really helps out with certainly you know, high speed performance for backup so you can meet those aggressive SLAs. Uh, we feel like we have pretty differentiated technology on the dedupe side, so it helps us, you know, our customers save um, in terms of you know, the, the storage that, they're, that, they're, that they have on disk. And then the other big thing is that they've also integrated with CloudBank, right? So it's our ability to store archive backup data for very, very long periods of time in either Azure or out in Amazon. And essentially using Commvault as the, as the workflow and the catalog and being able to plug into the ability for us to federate primary, secondary, and the cloud is a pretty powerful uh, integration for customers who might already have HPE, might already have Commvault, so it definitely brings a lot of value into, into that. Yeah, Patrick, we've seen a, a real maturation of that, really the multi-cloud model in the last yep. couple of years. Uh, it, it, it seems like that's a foundational piece of the partnership between Commvault and HP. What are you hearing from customers, uh, and what differentiates this solution from, from others in the market? Yeah, so I mean, I think the secondary storage is one that's always rife for having a multi-cloud uh, storage, whether it's people just wanting to do something like, I don't want a secondary data center, I want to use the cloud, I want to replace tape, you know, there's a number of different reasons why I think the differentiation part comes in the technology that I talked about before and making that very seamless for customers and be able to move workloads out to uh, the public cloud for the purposes of long-term data retention. Uh, the other key thing is that we're providing this to customers in completely as a service 
uh, style. So not only from a technology perspective, but the way you consume it now. So we're able to provide primary, secondary, your Commvault solution, the Azure capacity, for example, uh, advisory services, and we're all able to package that up on a, you know, a per terabyte or a per metric basis that customers consume in, a, in an elastic manner, like you would the cloud. Yeah, I, you know, HP was one of the, one of the first, uh, you know, forgive me if I say, you know, legacy, 78 year old company. People automatically assume companies like AWS and even Azure move that mm -hmm. way, but where have you seen customers in their readiness, both from a people standpoint as well as a you know, procurement model to, for that model? And you know, as I said, HPE is one of the, one of the first one to the, the big traditional players that, that help push that model. Yeah, so I, you know, the desire's there. Uh, we pitch this you know, every day, every week, uh, and it's, it's got a lot of uh, legs from a customer interest perspective. We are transacting, um, and you know, we'll start to you know, build our business and it, it helps us financially as well too, right? Because for all us to offer those as a service, that's a reoccurring revenue, it's bookings, it's not just your traditional CapEx hardware you know, acquisition, so it helps us. And, and a little known fact is that HPE Financial Services, when you talk about an established company, um, we have a, a, a very, very high net promoter score for HPE FS. And that's one of the capabilities that allows us to, to provide these really, really granular, flexible services for our customers. So we've got a lot of things going at HPE, being a, a more established, uh, mature company with a very large uh, install base. So uh, not, not only the technology piece, but the financial aspects of it is something we can offer as well. well pa Patrick, talk to me about some of the advantages of the as a service from an agility perspective. When I think of consuming HPE physical hardware, on-prem through HP Financial Services, and I'm consuming this as a service, how does that enable agility for your customers? Uh, well, it, it enables agility in the financial model, number one. So a lot of you know, customers are asking us for as a service, subscription models, moving from CapEx to OpEx, and not just an OpEx lease, right, because that doesn't count anymore. The, right. the rules are changing. So what we're able to do is we provide an actual service, right? So we have um, the customer hands over the architecture reins to us, right? So we have an established methodology of how we you know, implement this. So no snowflakes, right? You know, we, we can build on a wealth of experience we have with a number of other customers to be able to you know, essentially deliver a number of outcomes. So it becomes very agile in the fact that you know, at the end of the day, secondary storage, some of the user stories are pretty mundane. They're very repeatable, right? And so you, if you hand that over to us, we're able to help you with that, not only financially, but architecturally, and from our operations perspective, and you can focus your talent uh, that you have in your organization on differentiating for your business, right? Because backups, you know, maybe at the end of the day, that's not going to be where you're going to hang your hat on, on your digital transformation as a customer, but it's certainly something you need, so we can both partner together on making that a better experience. All right, go ahead. Hold on, I was going to ask, how do customers, what's the interface? How do customers consume these as a service solutions, whether it's the secondary storage or if it's a uh, service living in the cloud? Mm. So uh, we have a number of examples of these. So when you take a look at a service that we have, for example, HPE Cloud Volumes, right? It has a portal, you log in, you can you know, put your credit card in, your, and, you, and you can add, uh, let's say, your cloud uh, credentials uh, in, into that as well, and then you are essentially off and running on you know, dollars per terabyte, and you can scale that up, you can scale that down. So at the end of the day, we're really trying to provide uh, an experience for customers that's very similar to the public cloud. And I think the other area that we've done, we've made some, uh, some acquisitions in this space, cloud technology partners, Red Pixie, Cloud Cruiser, so not only on the, you know, being able to use the consumption methodology and the metering that we provide, but also the advisory services is something that you get from HPE. You know, you, have, you actually get to talk to people, right, that know how to do this and have done it before and can help you arbitrate and, and make you very successful. All right, so Patrick, last 18 to 24 months, the secondary storage space has just yep. been, you know, buzzing, almost frothy, if you will. Yes. Um, you know, Combo's been around for 20 years. Five years ago, there wasn't the excitement in the space. Yep. There's the startups, uh, there's companies like you know, Commvault and Veritas and Veeam uh, who have you know, established uh, uh, you know, customer base in there. 
why do you see so much excitement there? Is it you know the new AI uh, availability? Is it you know if somebody with you know I've got plenty of background in the storage industry. Um, you know, we're just data is so critically important that it's right there. What, what, what do you see? I see it as a, it's a massive shift in thinking from TCO to ROI, right? Five years ago, you're having conversation is, how can I do this as cheaply as possible, right? It, you know, it's, it's a non-differentiated life insurance policy, right, at the end of the day. Now it's all about what can I do to maximize the return on that data? And it could be things that are, you know, not super sexy, but test verification, sandbox labs, being able to provide copies of data for your developers to get a better experience um, and a, you know, a better quality experience for their customers at the end of the day. So there's a number of things that we've been able to unlock in the secondary storage area, and some people call it you know, copy data management, hyper-converge for secondary storage. I mean, there's lots of different names and nomenclatures applied to it, but it's essentially, from what I see, is people unlocking the value of that data, where it used to be captured, siloed, untouchable, um, but now you've un unlocked a number of possibilities um, you know, for, for this data, because it's, and you can, it's multi-use, right? It's, uh, it's the new currency. Yeah, I, I, we, we always argue it's, uh, you know, at, at the show Commvault saying that data is the new water. Um, but, you know, Dave Vellante would say, well, water often is a scarce resource and something yeah. we all have to fight for. Data, the ability to unlock the data is we can use it multiple times in lots of different ways, and the more I use the data, the more valuable it is, not, uh, not like traditional resources. Yeah, and also too from, you, you know, you, some of the big bets you've seen from HPE is certainly a big investment uh, on edge-centric computing as well too, so our edge line, the build out of 5G, uh, certainly the ubiquitous wireless networks that we provide with Aruba, so there's a huge amount of uh, capability of either moving the processing outside the data center, but that data is still data. It needs to be protected, you need to be able to use it. So I think, that we're, just, I think we're just getting started in some of these areas, uh, certainly around secondary storage. So let's talk about the value that .next brings to the mix. We're talking about some pretty advanced use cases, the edge, the data center, the mm. cloud. Stitching this together isn't quite simple. Tell us about the .next story and how they help to extend the capability beyond just throwing zeros and ones? Um, so I think the, the, there's, a, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of our folks that cover customers, account team, sales you know, folks, that are, are really ensure our customer success, they view this area as very rife for you know, certainly advisory services. I think one of the things is that um, uh, having the capability of doing this, you, you guys have seen in the past couple of years, people have scaled back dedicated storage admins, right? right. Ba dedicated backup admins, Re you know, unless you're in a very large shop, really don't exist. You've moved towards, you know, essentially hypervisor admins, generalists, right? So I think that our capability is we have those services. We have that expertise in-house. And for us to be able to provide, you know, very good uh, reference architectures that touch all parts of the stack. Because secondary storage is, you know, it's not just selling an all flash array, you know, right. for example, or some capacity optimized disk. It touches everything. It's a questions around what's your SLA, what are the apps, what, you know, what are you trying to do? So for us, we have a, you know, a wealth of resources and knowledge in this space and bringing in companies like Cloud Technology Partners and Red Pixie into our, our services organization, it gives us the ability to help customers make that move to hybrid cloud as well too, which is, is very important. Yeah, Patrick, the other message we're hearing uh, loud and clear from Commvault is the roadmap is a lot of automation. There's yes. the intelligence, um, you know, you talk about all those admins, uh, it was funny, they put up all these roles up on the board uh, in the keynote this morning and all of them really were bots <laughs> underneath. Yeah. You've got to have automation <laughs> and do that. Yep. Um, you know, have us look forward, how does the HPE roadmap and the Commvault roadmap, how, how much synergy is those with, with those visions? Yeah, so uh, right now we're definitely running along some parallel lines. I mean, I, I, they probably fire me if I get, didn't get off stage here without talking about InfoSight, right? Because that's a, it's a huge investment for us and it's, we think it's a huge opportunity. Um, you guys have seen the proof in the pudding from that in terms of automated support, we've got predictive analytics now, so for us, the, the more that you can build in from an AI and ML perspective, uh, we think the value is in a couple areas. Certainly cross stack, so going all the way from the app 
down through the infrastructure and we're, and we're providing that uh, through InfoSight. Uh, and then we're also uh, expanding some of the use cases to include things like secondary storage, right? So if you see, um, uh, let's say we have a signature that we can see, right? That a certain I.O. pattern, right? We'll make some predictive uh, calls to the infrastructure to say, hmm, that looks like uh, ransomware. Maybe you should take a full clone of that and then encrypt it and shove it up in the cloud. Right? Or the change rate on your database just elevated two orders of magnitude. Maybe I should think about you know, moving some workloads that are adjacent to that off you know, that system. So um, as we expand those and then allow that type of workflow to, to, to enable our partners as well too, you can see where that value would head as well too, right? So where you start to integrate some of the telemetry from HPE telemetry from you know, a vendor and uh, an ISV partner like Commvault, you could do, you could do some, some really powerful things across the stack. All right, uh, last thing for you, Patrick. You're going to be on the keynote tomorrow. Yep. Show us a little bit uh, you know, for our audience here what, what, what to expect from HPE. Uh, so I think you know, we talked a little bit about today. Uh, you know, we're going to focus uh, our talk tomorrow on, the, on some of the new consumption models, right? so as a service, and we're certainly going to highlight some of the things that we've done so far in AI and ML, right? and, cer and certainly making the lives of our storage and, and data customers uh, a lot easier, and you know, a little bit of a vision as to where we're going with both those two. All right, well, Patrick, always a pleasure to catch up with yeah. you. Thanks for joining us, and look forward to catching you up at the next event. Thanks for having me. All right, for Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more coverage here from Commvault Go here in Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for watching theCUBE.